And another placement hearing for a sexually violent pre predator is now being closed off to the public. District Attorney Summer Steffen is proposing legislature that would allow the public to witness these hearings. She joins us now to discuss. Uh, DA Steffen, good to talk with you tonight. Good to be with you, Ginger. You know this is very frustrating. This is a, um, a, a series of stories I cover at length. It seems like that oftentimes there's more protections for these sex offenders than the public. So what's the judge's reasoning behind these decisions? You know, I don't understand them. They really go uh, against everything we know about our justice system. Access to justice, having open courtrooms that are transparent, that's at the heart of the, our democracy. For whatever reason, there is a distinction being drawn, but it's a distinction that's not supported by law, that sexually violent predators, because they fall in this, what we call quasi-criminal civil proceeding, because they've already been convicted, and now we're looking at keeping them in a state mental hospital because they're dangerous, because they're predators, that that's somehow the democratic system of transparency transparency in open courtrooms doesn't apply. And that's why I'm taking it uh, to the legislature to make it clear law. Yeah, because they get these extra, I guess, a consideration because it is a civil commitment and no longer an actual sentence, but they wouldn't get to this civil commitment without that actual sentence and that actual conviction. So this is absolutely seemingly a loophole. It is a huge loophole, and while we feel our arguments are clear and are supported by law and they go to the heart of their, our democracy, um, it's, it's not working, meaning we're seeing this now in multiple cases, not just where we fought it in Corliss, but in two cases that are current, that are happening now. And, you know, talking to victims, what they feel is that this is bad enough that they have to suffer the potential release of someone in their community, but that they have to suffer it without actually getting to hear the very facts that affect their lives. Um, that when a victim feels shut out, like there's something hidden from them, that, that makes for even more pain. And that's why we have to fight and we're hoping the community will fight alongside us to pass this law uh, which we're bringing forward. Yeah, because I mean, the victims, the crimes, their life, it just gets out there on public display. I mean, it, I've talked to many victims who say they feel like they've been re-brutalized because of the court proceedings. And yet again, there's so many protections, you know, for the, the suspects and the convicted felons in this case. So let's talk about the legislation. First of all, I applaud the fact that you aren't just saying, well, this is how it is. This is what we do. Instead, you're wanting some action. Tell me exactly what you're asking for. Well, the law that we're asking for will add a provision to the sexually violent predator laws that will directly say that the proceedings would be open for the public unless the court finds extraordinary circumstances to close a hearing, but that can only be done on the record where the reasons that make it so extraordinary, which I can't imagine what reasons those, those would be, um, would be put on the record with notice to the victims and the parties to state their peace. That's, that, that strikes a fair balance if there really is an extraordinary reason why the courtroom has to be closed, then the judge would put that information on the record. And we're very happy that Senator Bates, I talked to her this week, she has agreed to carry this law, to, to author it, and to join on this. So this is a, a, already a good step forward that we have uh, a, a senator with you know years of experience that is willing to carry this law. So the law is called SB 1023. She's going to be, uh, Senator Bates is going to be introducing that legislation. Um, have you gotten any feedback as far as how it's going to be received and, and looking to potentially pass it and make it law? 
you know, we've received some positive feedback from the media. I mean, and the, uh, because the media is always fighting and, and journalists are fighting for open access. That falls under the First Amendment. It's it's very, very important to our system. So we are, we are hoping that we can have a, a consolidation of efforts and voices that are coming from every direction, from victim survivor voices and from a free press, you know, that wants to have that access. And with that together, we might be able to overcome the very weak arguments that somehow um, th th these hearings, because they involve treatment at the state mental hospitals, should be treated differently. You know, that argument does not work because it is, it is the offender that's putting their treatment on display, meaning they're saying, I've been treated, I'm cured, so let me out. Well, if that's the case, then they've put that as you know something that they want. So we should be able to open an examination with the public seeing it and seeing whether they buy it or not. Exactly, because I know in these hearings, you hear from the medical doctors that are treating these offenders. And we're talking about, again, placing them into communities. So the fact that the community would then be shut off from that dialogue is uh, really just hard to stomach. So it's called SB 1023, call to action for uh, all our viewers and everybody out there. Contact your local state uh, senator, legislature, and let them know how you feel about SB 1023, co-authored by our very own District Attorney Summer Stefan. Summer, love the hair, you look great. <laughs> You're doing fantastic work. Thank you, Ginger. Right. That was a conspiracy by the kids. I appreciate oh, it? it. Yeah, you look beautiful. <laughs> All right. Thank you thank so much you. for your time tonight.